Welcome back to the Brahman Word, and we are continuing to look at some misunderstood verses or passages in the Bible. And uh, today we are looking at just one verse in the book of Colossians. So turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Uh, we are going to be looking at verse 15. Uh, this again is under the epistolary genre or uh, an epistle. Uh, so basically it is... Uh, it is a response to a situation or to a former letter uh, sent by the Church of Colossae to uh, the Apostle Paul, and he is responding in uh, in manner. And so with that, uh, we are going to be looking at verse 15. So Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. So, you you probably might be thinking, what is misunderstood about this? Uh, it seems pretty clear cut, uh, but it really has to do with the word peace. And specifically, what does the peace of Christ or the Spirit? or the peace of God mean? What does that actually mean? Uh, and what does it do? And so first off, uh, the Greek word for peace here is eirene, and uh, it can mean just peace, uh, but it can also mean a sense of quiet, of serenity, or oneness even. And so really, you have very much this sense of uh, of confidence in God. However, a lot of times, and this is where the misunderstanding could come from, let's say, for instance, you have a decision to make, a career, or moving your family to a bigger house, or staying with the one that you have, um, whatever it might be, and you are given options, and you're like, okay, Lord, I just ask then this moment that you give me the your peace and uh, just allow me to have peace with whatever is the best option. And you you start looking through those options and you have this feeling within you uh, that option A is better than options B or C or B is better than A or C or, or C is better than A and B. And so therefore you feel like because of that feeling, that's the peace of Christ. And therefore the peace of Christ is, is leading you to that option. The problem is and don't get me wrong, God can certainly work through that. But that is not what the peace of Christ is talking about specifically within this context. Uh, because again, with misunderstood verses and passages in the Bible, it is all about the context. Uh, we can't just pick a verse and throw it out there and see if it fits, or even if it does seem to fit on the surface, does that really, is that really what that verse is, is talking about? And I think for the first three that we've looked at, context really helps us understand what is going on. Well, the same is true here. So first off, with this context as a whole, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, we're all we're just talking about what does it mean to be a new follower of Jesus? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Well, first off, it means to be a new creation. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that we are transformed into a new physical body. Like when you and I become a believer in Jesus, that doesn't mean we wake up the next morning and we no longer have facial hair or we have a different hair color or uh, we've grown six inches taller or we've shrunk six inches shorter. <laughs> that doesn't mean that at all. Uh, instead, what that means is that you are a new uh, creation within Christ. Basically, uh, you have put to death your old self. Uh, the you that uh, did not know Jesus, that was dead within your sins. You were going towards an eternal judgment in a place called hell. 
Uh, however, because you have believed in Jesus, because uh, you have proclaimed him as Lord and Savior of your life, you are now a new creation. Uh, you are now destined to be glorified uh, with him. And it actually mentions that in verses 1 through 4. Uh, so let's read that. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And that glory that's talked about there is the glory of God, or uh, a big word that we use in Christian academics is glorification. And what that really just means is that when you, uh, as a follower of Jesus, pass away, or when Jesus comes back, um, uh, whatever, whichever one of those happens first, at that moment, you are given a resurrection body. What that means is that you are given a body that is not marred by sin. It is perfect. You cannot suffer. You cannot die because you will be in the presence of Christ for all eternity or what we call eternal life. And uh, and that is what it's getting at there. However, before we go further here, I do want to explain verse 2. When it's saying about setting your minds on things that are above and not on things that are on earth, there's a couple of things here first. It doesn't mean that you are to literally just walk around with your head up looking at the sky the whole entire time. It uh, doesn't mean that. Second, it doesn't mean that things that are on earth, whether it be family or friends or, or your job or whatever uh, that might be, it doesn't mean that it is... Uh, that it is wrong to, to partake in having a job. It doesn't mean that it is wrong to love your family. It doesn't mean any of that. So what it, what is it getting at? Uh, I think it is all talking about how we view the world or our worldview. Do we have a biblical worldview that is placed on, okay, what can the Bible tell me about um, things that I am going through? Or, based on the things that I'm going through, uh, what truths, what principles can I find in Scripture to help me through uh, this decision or this uh, situation that I'm going through? So that is what is talked about when it's talking about biblical worldview, whereas an earthly worldview is all about, okay, uh, what can I do for myself? Or what can I do to further my career? What can I do to get X, Y, and Z possessions? That's what it's talking about with an earthly worldview, which Paul actually goes into in verse 5. Verse 5, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is, uh, which is idolatry. And again, on the surface, it makes sense why you would put those things to away uh, with those words, sexual immorality, impurity, uh, passion, evil desire, covetousness, uh, which is idolatry. It seems on the surface that would be really easy to do. However, it's not. It's not very easy to do at all because we still live in a sinful world with a sinful nature, even though uh, we have been um, saved by the blood of Jesus and have put our trust in him as Savior and are following him. Uh, but then, thankfully, that's why we get these great things that we should be putting on instead or making a part of our life or driving how we view the world. Verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And a part of that new creation, this new godly character that you and I are to have, is the peace of Christ. 
uh, verse 15 then comes right in right at that moment. And what is the peace of God? It is this confidence in Christ, in God, that you are that he will see you through a situation, not give you peace of Christ at the end of a situation or a trial, um, or when everything's gone back to normal, <laughs> or basically a time of blessing. Um, no, the peace of Christ or the peace of God actually can happen at any time, whether it's at the beginning or in the middle or at the end of your situation that you are wrestling with or the trial that you are going through or the consequence of your sin even. Uh, you can have this peace of Christ, not that you, with the, with your the, the consequences of sin, the peace of Christ does not mean that you have, that you didn't do anything wrong. No, it, it just means that God has not given up on you. Uh, he has not forsaken you, even if you have sinned against him. Even in those moments that you do sin against him, he has not thrown you away. Uh, because, again, he has bought you at a price with the blood of Jesus. And that sees you through um, because it is... Uh, because by grace you are saved through faith and that through uh, the blood of Jesus. So with that being said, um, that then gives you this sense of thankfulness. And on the surface, that may seem weird, that phrase, and be thankful. But that and be thankful is not during times of just blessing, but it's also during times of, of, uh, of trial of these hard circumstances that you go through, you should be grateful during those times. I'm not saying that you should be grateful because of those things, uh, because that would be a little bit weird, right? You get a very serious uh, diagnosis of, a, of an illness, and you go, hey, that's great. No, that's not what we're talking about. Instead, what we're talking about, we can have this sense of, thankfulness during our struggles, during our trials, because we know uh, and we have confidence in the fact that Jesus will see us through, and that gives us peace. That gives us serenity. That gives us unity in the idea uh, and in the truth that Jesus will see us through all trials and tribulations. And then verses 16 uh, and 17 really just further that idea that we are grateful to the Lord uh, because of the peace of Christ that he gives to you and I as followers of Jesus. So with that being said, I hope that uh, just kind of really just shores up what the peace of God or the peace of Christ is. It is not a um, a crystal ball telling you what to do, uh, but it is the sense of confidence that Jesus will see you through, whether it is a tough decision or even um, a really hard circumstance that you are going through, or the guilt of your sin as well. Um, you will be shown through all of that, and you will have peace through all of that. Uh, and that is only through Christ and through uh, the fact that you are following after him as your Savior. So with that being said, thank you for spending another time with a misunderstood verse with me today. We will continue to look at more uh, and, and another one on Thursday. I will see you then. Thanks.